Hey guys, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Chili's Repentance Tour. Today's topic is going to be multi-process testing. Uh, specifically, I guess a lot of it is just going to be to do with how is a good way of spawning a process from another process, a child process, and how can we use that to do unit tests. And the thing that we're going to be using is boost process. So this is also a tutorial about boost process. No, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have unit tests. And then every unit test will, you know, do some processing, test some feature out. And you can run them all as a single suite. And that would be great. Now the problem with that is that unit tests, testing framework, that's going to run all in a single process. There's no way to tell the test to spawn up a different process. Uh, at least not within, you know, the rails of the unit testing framework. So you got a couple of options. You can create a console application. You can run that alongside running your tests. So it's just sitting there and every test is running against this single console application. Now that's not great because what if one of the tests is ill-formed and it crashes the interprocess companion process? Uh, well then all the other tests after that are also going to fail, not because there's something wrong with them, but because the test before them ruined the state. So ideally you want every test case to be its own independent compartmentalized thing that isn't affected by the other tests. So in order to do that, we do option two, which is we spawn the process, the, the companion process, for every test case. So now we've got to go and we've got to spawn a child process. And ideally, we'd like to communicate with it with this stidio, stid in and stid out, to do some control of the testing. And that's annoying in Windows because you gotta you gotta call a special function and you gotta hook up the redirect the input and output to like named pipes and then you got to use named pipes for the communication that sucks so i'm going to show you something that is much cooler and that is boost process all right so there's the there's the initial spiel out of the way so what are we doing here well i got a solution i got four projects one of the projects is just the chili the cli framework utility that i created in a previous video and uh, we're going to be using that for the companion process one of the ways that we can communicate with the companion process. So that's in its own static library that's going to be consumed by console app. Now we've got another share a static library and that's going to hold the, uh, the logic for our shared memory. We're not going to actually touch that one in this video because in this video I just want to focus on how do we spawn and control child processes for our testing purposes. So we're not going to worry about this one but that will be consumed eventually by the console application and by the tests themselves. Uh, so then we've got the tests. It's just your standard Microsoft native tests that we're going to work with here. And we'll be able to view the tests in the test explorer and run them and see the results. And then we have our console application. It's going to define some command line options based on our CLI framework. And we've got a main in here. We parse the CLI and then we're going to do some stuff in here that is going to interact with our unit tests. So there you go. There's the whole setup. Now, what I want to do in this test, the first test is I just want to spawn a process and not do anything with it. Just spawn it and make sure that it exits, you know, gracefully. Check its exit code and that's it. That's all I want to do. So first things first we need boost process process and for us to be able to use it we first have to build it's going to pick up that we added something to the vc package manifest and it's going to pull that stuff into our project now normally this would take quite a while but because i have done this previously on this machine it's actually cached all of the uh the, the build artifacts and so it's very fast. It's a very nice feature of VC package with the manifests. So there we go. We have got the boost process. We should be able to include it in our test framework here. Include boost process.hpp and we have access to all the good stuff. Now name now let's create the simplest test that we can. BP. So how do we you know spawn a child process? Well we just create an object that represents that child, which is BP child. We'll call this one just the process. And we gotta pass it the name of the executable, which is going to be console app.exe. I verified ahead of time that the relative path that the tests are running into is the same place where the exe goes, so that's very nice and convenient. And now all we wanna do is wait 
for the process to die. So we go process.wait, and then we want to check that the exit code is what we expect it to be. All right, let's build this mother trucker, and we should expect, so our test explorer here, we got the process spawn test. Let's run the test. We should expect it to run without any problems, and it does run. Uh, 40 milliseconds is quite a lot. I don't know if that's typical. Yeah, that's that's more like what I expect. Single digit milliseconds to spawn these processes and run the test. That's what I see in my work. So, okay, good. So we can spawn the process. There's no problem. Now, I mean, just to, to demonstrate, if the process doesn't exist, it's not going to be a good time. Yeah, it like it throws an exception and it's not not good. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to test communication with this process with standard uh, standard I/O. So this is one of the places where Boost process really shines. It's very easy and very slick to communicate with the child process. Uh, so we create something called Ipstream. And we'll just call this in, and this is in from child process. And then BP opstream, this is out, out to child. And how we connect these stream to the child process that we make is a very nice slick little interface here. A little, little magical, but also very, uh, very easy to read and convenient. So there's a just a global object BP stid out, and then you put a redirection operator into the thing that you want to direct it into, which is our in. And then we go BP stid in, and that's where our out is going to go to. So the out, our out object is feeding into the stid in of the child, and the stid out from the child is feeding into our in. And there you go. We have connected these now to the child process, and we can write to them just like we would write to stid in and stid out. So let's uh, let's just do a little test here. So do std string buffer and in from child into our buffer is what we're gonna do. And we are going to assert our equal default output buffer. So we're expecting the uh, the, te the companion process to just write default output in this scenario. So we go to our companion process in here, and let's just uh, yeah we got I/O stream. So let's go std c out default output std indel, and there you go. And we'll do our process test and exit code. There's no, there's no harm in continuing that little check there. So our test uh, explorer has picked up the new test. We can run it. And it works. Now, just to make sure that it is actually doing something and not just, you know, giving you the thumbs up, we can run it again with a bad string. And now it fails. And it says we expected D default output, and we got default output, which is good. So, there you go. We can read from the output of our test, our companion process. So now, let's do another test. Process CLI test. So we're going to test the command line. So let's add an option here, CLI test. And what this is going to do, CLI test, and there is no placeholder value. So we're going to invoke the process with a command line option, and the command line should spit that back out at, with, with some processing. And then we can verify that it's what it expected, and we got like a two-way communication channel working. So what we're going to do is if opt dot CLI test. So if that was specified, I'm going to spit out some code that includes the thing that was passed on the CLI so we can verify that the, uh, the companion app got the message, basically. Uh, let's change this for funsies. Let's change this just to an int value. And uh, if we do this one, then we're not going to output the default output string. So now in our test here, 
we need to pass a command line option and the value for that option. So you just do that by putting them on the, uh, the argument list like this. So this one would be CLI test. And then separate from that, we have to specify the value for that, which is going to be just a, just a random number. Just I pick it out of nothing, no, no significance to it whatsoever. CLI test. Okay, so we're going to call it with this value. And what we expect it to say is, let's just go back here, CLI test code. Sixty-nine, right? All right. So there we have your boy and this show. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, that makes sense because this the default value should not be a string. Uh, so we'll just say that the default is negative one, and we're gonna run the we'll run our whole test suite here. There we go. No problem. So it's definitely picking up the value that we spit in on the CLI. All right, now let's do let's do another one. Let's do a full on yummy test. So this one's just going to be a flag studio round trip. And for this one, first we are going to read and then write. We'll use a string for this one. So std string just call it buffer and then std cn read into the buffer. And then we have studio test code buffer. We pass that back. Okay. And now, now we have process studio test round trip. So, so this one is just a flag. It does not take anything else in there. So out to the child, we are going to write our code classic, and then we're going to read something in and we should get studio test code cubes. There we go. And this is what we expect. This is our design. Build that. Check the test explorer. A new challenger has appeared. Let's run it. And it works. So there you go. And we have now tested all the functionality that we want. Spawning a child process. Reading from a standard output. Passing in information via the CLI. And writing and reading to standard output. And this is all we need now to use this separate process as a companion and just basically spawn it up per test case. And, and this will allow us to proceed with doing some inter-process communication via shared memory. That's going to be in the next video. Until then, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ repentance.